Hi everyone, it's Nono here, and this is a quick tutorial, a hands-on coding tutorial on how to create a flex grid with HTML5 to display your content on the web. Before you had to do many hacks, but the Flexbox, a CSS a component or properties allow you to specify a display flex property on your items. And this makes it super easy to display content in nice ways, even making it a responsive. So let's dive in into the side of coding and see how this is done. I have a terminal window here. The first thing is I'm going to go to my desktop and I do have the Laravel command line interface here installed. I installed it with Composer and you can probably Google or look for previous videos on how to get this going. The first thing that we're going to do is a simple command that this CLI tool lets you do. We're going to run Laravel new and what this does is going to create an application on my computer on the desktop with the name app. So that's going to be the name of the folder. And if I hit enter, you can see that this CLI tool starts going. It clones the latest version of Laravel and then it runs the command to install with Composer all of the dependencies, all of the vendor packages that this application requires to be able to be executed on my machine. It's finished. It also created a key, like a security key for my application and installed 74 for 61, I don't know how many packages, but there, there are many packages in here. So I can go now and enter the directory of my application. I can click LS. I can see that if I do list all the vendor packages, there's a bunch of stuff in there, right? So it did install many packages. And right away, we could run valet link app. And what this is going to do is that it's going to serve our application. So this is a CLI tool from Laravel that is called Laravel Valet. And you can Google that and see how to install it or go to my Laravel playlist and see those previous videos. So I can now go and open HTTP app test, which is what we're serving. And this Laravel application that I just created is going to get running. So this is running on my machine. And I can show you that if I just open the application with Visual Studio Code, so I'm going to just open this here and we're going to browse the, the files. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to routes to see that we have a simple route here that is showing the, the welcome view. We could overwrite that to hello from no, no life. So we can now go back so we can comment this one out and refresh. So this is a live application that we have here and we're serving a view. So we are going to still leave this but we can rename this view as list because we're going to create a list of contents or maybe even like a grid view. And I'm going to go to the resources of this project. I can find the view here and I'm going to rename it to know that this is a view that we are going to customize. And we can actually use the boilerplate code here. You can see that there is a lot of code in here that we don't need. And we're just going to leave the body of this application empty. I'm going to also remove the, the styles that were here in the body. And I'm going to remove some of the other stuff that we don't need. We're going to change the name of the site, none of my life, and we're going to load this, right? So now we just get the title. It's an empty website. And actually, I'm going to try to run this with a handy command that comes with Laravel. Let me see if we can do npm to install that the dependencies of this application and we can remove this part. All right. So now once these packages are installed, we install 700 and 69 packages, we can run npm run hot. And this is going to serve our application locally in a way that it's going to be rebuilding every time I make a change and reloading without me having to refresh. And I don't know if this is going to happen automatically, but let, let's try it because I think I do need to install some tools that we don't have right now. So the thing that we need to do on our webpack.mix.js file, the only thing we need to do is that we need to put here mix browser sync and then the domain name to which we want to reroute this application that is going to be served. So we run again npm run hot and you can actually go to package.json and see those commands, right? What they are actually doing. This is running mix watch hot and using the web app mix configuration. It says here, if this is the first time you run it, you need additional dependencies, which are run. And now we can probably skip that part. So npm run hot. All right. So we get this window now 
in here. This is the app.test, but this is the, the local host. So this is routing our application at app.test. And you can see this if I now write something in here. So let's do my test code, right? So this is updating live, which is pretty cool because now I don't have to hit refresh every time that we're doing changes to our code. I can hide the terminal and now we have a really good starting point to get going. So the first thing I'm going to set everything to, to have a nice font family, just system UI, which works on Mac. And, and you can see that there. And I'm going to put a font size of three rem. Let's see if that's not too big. That's really big. So maybe 1.5. So we can add some padding to our body. So we get that separated and we're going to make now a block. So let's say none of that my life. And this is flex grids. And now we're going to make a block here. So I'm going to make a div that is going to be called or kind of have the class container and we would make here container items, right? So we're going to make different container items. So we do that. We don't have any CSS, but we're going to add that CSS here. So we say container is going to have, let's say a border that is going to be maybe purple and it's going to be of one pixel and solid, not split, but solid. And if we see now that is going to be stretching, but maybe we want a max width, which is maybe 45 rem, and that makes it go up to a maximum height. So width, and we can also do now margin zero auto. So the sides are gonna be automatically set. So we actually get like a center div, right? And we can actually apply this same thing to, to maybe if we make a, like a header component just to put our title. So we can do here div.header and I press tab. And then we put that there. So we get that in there. And what we're going to do now, just put some margin to the bottom of this component. So if we go back here, we leave the site here. We have one item. And if we do a style for that item, so we do container item and we also put a border. So we, we do maybe one pixel solid and choose the color salmon. Then you see that's fitting the entire thing as well. So the first thing we can do, and this is the important part, I'm going to set here the display of the container to flex. And now you see that this item is not taking the full width, but just a, a tiny bit and that we can add more items there, right? We have now three items. There's one thing that we can do. So for example, we can say that the, let's say the flex basis of each component might be like 35 percent or maybe it's 38 percent right if the width of the component is 100 in total 38 multiplied by 3 is 114 so these are actually being squashed to 33.33333 you can see that if i do maybe 20 percent those get squeezed there and if we were to do let's say 45 percent they wouldn't fit we could still get three thirds but we can do here use this property that is flex wrap and we say wrap and then these components actually get that 50 so 45 percent perfectly we can see that in here and we're actually going to put these ones to 28 percent and if you multiply 28 by 3 we get 84 that makes we have a 16 percent that is missing and we'd like to add a margin between the boxes but not at the end so one thing that you could actually do is you say align items i never exactly know which one it is but you do space between and i think it might be justify items so justify items space between align content okay one thing that i like to do here that is handy is like you get the the inspection box you maybe put it here you can make this a bit bigger so you can read and once i have this right i can get the flex i can click here the flex box highlighted i can push this up and then i can modify this life so i can say justify items for example those are moving so justify content space in between which is what i thought i had put before you can see that here i get a highlight of these box margins that are not being filled the problem with this is that if we set justify content so justify well we just put this justify here we update we have this but if we put more items look what happens so i just put two items then these two go to the sides we would like to be one two three four and the five here in the middle so for that we need to do something else we just need to use the wrap so we get back to where we get these items but now we need to put that 
24 by 3, so we're missing 28 pixels. I put 28, so let's put 28 here. 16. So that means that we need to put a margin on the right that needs to be 16 between 2. That is going to be 8% on the right. The problem is that this one is also trying to put margin on the right and the only thing we can do is that we say container item what i'm trying to do and i'll show you what happens with that is if i say for example container item is not the end of type so i say i don't want it i i don't want this to affect to the third of its type i'm going to say that the background color is going to be rgba like a transparent color that we can see but it's not too much so this is feeling one two not the third one two and not the third so if i put more of these items here you see that it's one two three one two three one two three the third one is always not affected that's the third end of the component so what we can do here is that we can say okay for that component that is white i can set that my margin right is zero so i reset it and now we get this working here but it's exactly the opposite right so what we want to do is that one there uh, the one that is not of that type is the one that has to have that eight percent and the one by default doesn't have it so let's do the calculus once again so it's this multiplied by three so we have 16 and then we get two so that's eight and this is working the problem is that because we add border to this item it actually adds width to the element so the only thing we need to do i believe is just remove that here and remove that from here okay yeah so what we've done is that we've removed the border from this item and what i'm going to do is that i'm going to add some padding to the item so maybe 1.5 rem that's not too much yeah that seems like it's a bit too much okay so let's put that by default the background of this is of a slight different color so you see that differentiation so this is green and we're going to put like a margin to the bottom there's going to be one ram and then maybe like a minimum height is going to be five ram or maybe that's too much let's put this here and we'll do border radius to three pixels so this is our container we could actually add something inside we could have a container item content or something and then we can add some padding internal padding to separate the content and we're gonna do wrap so we'll wrap let's say we change everything here and we say okay this is gonna be a container item content and then we put item right so now we have the control of where we want to be in respect to the, the actual item we want some margin there to to make our content look nicer so we're going to put this here so we want to make the font here slightly smaller font size 1.5 ram and we're going to make now a container title and container so this would be item title and item content for the content i'm going to say that the, the color is going to be uh, black but with uh, a bit of less opacity and this is going to be maybe uh two weight 600 we just now make our all our items the same and we just make the items have like this container item title and then we make the body here this is text or body item content maybe item body so we got that right this now looks slightly better than before and maybe we can remove that background or put a background that makes a bit more sense that's something that looks a bit nicer so what we can do is that for this thing here we're going to make the the color of the font which we won't see a lot okay, so we've actually made this a different color let's leave it like that let's just maybe change we don't really need these to be different and we can have a a class that tells our list to either be this proportion or, or have a different proportion so we could say for example we have these items but if we say this is like a grid right now right so if we say container when the container has the property list the container item is going to have a flex basis of 100 and a margin of zero and even this one is going to have it right maybe we can just do container when not list awesome so if i now were to add to this container i were to add the class list if i save you see now we get this list of items here and we could adjust other parameters we could say also maybe that the the mean height doesn't really need to be so tall so you can do maybe here like two rem or something so we don't really have a minimum height so now we have the possibility of saying this is like a grid 
and this is the list and maybe we can even restrict so our max width is not so wide so we just make it like this but we can make it for both of them and a nice tip here is that we can make a thing just like this right if we do wrap width and we say 30 rem so we just have a variable there and now if i change this number everything that uses that variable changes so now we have a variable there we can make this and now i can visualize that list grid arrangement again uh, a really nice thing that i showed before that you could use is we could use this nth type so for example i could say okay container item of the nth type of 2n so every even or odd so we're going to make a transform scale maybe 1.3 or 0.5 so now i'm making each other component i'm making it slightly smaller but only the even ones right every two so every other one i could say that the opacity is 0.5 and and you can apply any property here so every third so only this ones every fourth and you can play with these arrangements if you do of course every other you could do this and if you want to shift it you can say plus one and then everything is shifting right if you do plus two everything shifts by two all right so this is a little tip that i'm doing here you don't really need to do this this is a flex grid there are many other arrangements that you can use so take a look at the properties at the display flex and the wraps and the justify context and align if we hadn't done this thing with the flex basis so big so if i do here maybe temporarily flex basis at 23 and i get back my border so i say border one pixel solid a salmon or something now i have that border you can see they're aligned to the left one thing if we go this is more apparent i think if we go to the list everything doesn't need to be aligned to the to the same part i can for example here say align items and say like flex end i think it was right and again if you don't know about these properties you just go here click on your flex container and try the option so justify flex end right so you can see flex end or flex start or you have a lot of other options so stretch and many others so let's go back to what we had before because it was fairly okay and you can imagine that you can add a lot more content and this would be your flex grid if you have any questions leave them on the comments send me a message or whatever i hope you learned something today this was html5 flex box or like the the way to create grids with native html5 this was nono martinez alonso i hope you got something out of this video there are more videos on laravel and web development on my channel i would invite you to go there thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you next time